and nothing is, uh, uh, nothing happens for no reason. See, you know, uh, what you see as your, um, as your reality is going to be your reality. So I want to meet your, I chose to be an artist, and my father would say, well, get a job. <laughs> and I kept on going, you know. Um, here I am. I'm, I'm, I consider myself, you know, as a successful artist. I've been doing it for over 25 years. I raised uh, three beautiful children doing art, you know. Um, by trade, I'm a, you know, a graphic designer. And, <clears throat> but doing fine art, that's what, you know, drawing me to be what I am today. And, and I'm happy and I love it. I don't think I really became an artist until I understood this work. Um, I'm formally trained. I went to college and learned all the basic, you know, color theory and composition and you know, different techniques. And so I came from that standpoint. And so I looked at work like Basquiat and said, this guy can't paint, he can't draw. <laughs> you know, and it was like, I, I didn't get it. But then I think at some point, when I began to understand that art comes from the soul, and it comes from the spirit, it comes from the heart. My work evolved. Um, I had to kind of, I tell art students that all the time because I'm blessed to have an opportunity to teach on a college level. And I, I, I tell the students, and it's so important, it's, it's, a, it's about releasing, and it's about also learning the rules. Learning the rules so you can alter and mend them. You know, uh, one of the reasons for that I think is like when you, when you begin to know the rules, you can control your palette, you can control a lot of things about the art, but if you don't, it's haphazard. You can, you'll hit it sometimes, you'll miss it sometimes, you'll never know how you got there. But if you understand the rules, you can play with that. But understanding all that, I had to release everything that I knew and just allow paintings to be more of a feeling and less from a technical aspect. And so I let go of composition, I let go of controlling the palette. I let go and let the spirit guide me. And so, um, and then looking at, like, as I remember first seeing Basquiat's work and then, and then looking at it later on, and just really realizing how masterful this work was and how it came from, even from a technical aspect, it was still very well done. But me with the ego, me with the, the degree and everything, I got caught up in that and really felt that a true artist, almost not, not that idea of being self-taught, but a true artist, you know, has to know the basic stuff about art. And uh, I still have that belief, but only to a certain degree now, because, uh, again, work has evolved because I got out of the way and let the experience work through me. And so I feel blessed for that from a spiritual standpoint. I feel blessed, but I know that I have no choice in this. I don't think that there is anything else I could do other than be like a fry boy at McDonald's. <laughs> and I probably, probably would do a good job of that. You know, but I knew this was a skill that <laughs> probably I loved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been thinking about art, you know. Um, but this is what I have. I, I really think, I think I heard that story. I think Michael Jordan said that. Michael Jordan's father said that about Michael Jordan, like he had no other choice. He was meant to be a basketball player. I really don't think I have any other choice than to be an artist because I live in the agreement. I think about it all the time. I'm, I'm looking at compositions when I look at the sky. I mean, I'm looking at it in movies. I'm looking at what paintings are on the wall when I'm looking at a movie. I'm thinking art all the time. And somehow I'm going to apply that to whatever I'm doing. So I'm here because I'm supposed to be. <laughs> saying that most of the artists that I know have, have known that they were artists before they finished first grade. And even though their parents and everybody else tries to convince them that they need to do something else that's going to allow them to eat, they usually reject all advice. Uh, I've always felt that I was, I thought I came here as an artist by age four. Uh, my mother did not understand why I wanted to do murals. I never was. <laughs> <laughs> by the time I got to be 35, 
Sarah si Karna. <laughs> but anyway, a, a great deal of, um, I'm trying to remember what the original question was, because I think it, I made a note that doesn't relate to what's been said. Um, I, uh, I think a good part of what I do is, in a, in a sense, kind of therapy. Uh, sort of a means of self-reflective thought, uh, reflecting on ideas and concepts that, con that, that I ponder, uh, with, the, with the idea that the viewer uh, would, would also not necessarily feel or see what I'm trying to project, <coughs> that they can come to it with a sense of meditation, Ooh. a sense of reflective thought for what it, what it might say to them. And, and that's sort of a simple explanation of my hope is that uh, the work will speak to whoever is looking at it on the level that they are viewing it. Let me go. So at that first stage, it was all about survival mode because I was out there 
you know, and um, it was it was scary. Ain't gonna lie, because you get used to, to a paycheck, you know, every week, every two weeks. And um, I said it would take about it took me about five years. You gotta find your rhythm as an artist, find out what shows work for you. You gotta build your clientele base, and it just going through that whole weaning period of, of not knowing when your money is coming. And I would say probably about after. Gosh, I've been in the game now for about 10, 15 years. I, I'm just now learning that, you know, as long as I do my part and use the gift God gave me, you know, he's going to take care of whatever I need. I mean, you know, being an artist, you can go through moments where you don't know your mortgage is going to get paid. I'm just keeping it real. But, I mean, you can go, your stuff can be on foreclosure, and all of a sudden you're blessed, and you got, you can almost pay somebody else's mortgage. <laughs> I mean, it's really... Like can, can flip like that, but you know, once you learn that and um, and know that you do you, you do your best in what you do, you know, you're, you're gonna be okay. And um, the reason why I keep doing it is like like other artists, it's therapy for me. It makes me feel good, just like in school. That was one thing that I did that my other peers could do. You know, I hung around with a lot of uh, A students, but I was a C student, but I, I was the only one that could draw. You know, so, <laughs>